Welcome back. In this session, we will discuss about Pragmatic Method of William James and C.S. Pierce. Pragmatism represents a number of different but elite tendencies in modern thought. It originated in America. It was C.S. Pierce who applied the term pragmatism for the first time in 1878. The pragmatic method was further endorsed by William James. The word pragmatism is of Greek origin which is synonymous to active or efficient. Pragmatic method. Pragmatism, a new method of approach to philosophical problems is distinctly hailed as the philosophy of life. Pragmatism, sometimes called as humanism, is a philosophy of action, doing, experimenting, achieving and overcoming. It looks upon the world as a place which has to be remodeled in accordance to man's desire. They do not treat the world as ready-made, perfect, beautiful, something to be enjoyed, contemplated or worshipped. The human world, that is the social world, the world of human affairs holds its attention. For pragmatists, the world is in the making and the attempt is to know how to make it better, that it may subserve its interests and is welfare. Pragmatism looks upon the mind, ideas and intelligence as instrumental for attaining certain ends. This view has been later developed as instrumentalism by John Dewey. Pragmatism consists in the method which interprets our idea of an object as what conceivable effects of a practical kind the object may involve, what sensation we are to expect from it and what reaction we must prepare. The truth of an idea consists in the satisfaction which it affords, either through the fulfillment of the sensory expectation or the success of the reaction. The truth as a whole indicates the utility or working of ideas. Pragmatism is a movement rather than a philosophy. It is like a corridor through which one may enter upon philosophic studies. It is a habit of looking forward to results rather than backward to the first principles. Everything is judged by its consequences. Any idea, theory, or dispute which does not make a difference in its practical consequences ceases to have significance. They cannot be tested. Hence, a great number of ancient philosophical controversies, theories, hypotheses and systems just fade away under rigid pragmatic test. They do not make an impact or difference. For pragmatists, workability is the criterion of truth. If they will not work, they are not true. Pragmatism unstiffens all theories, limbers them up and sets each one at work. The pragmatic theory of truth. The pragmatists make use of their method for clarifying and testing ideas and theories. Theories are true if they work. They have their meaning in terms of their practical consequences in actual experience. They are true when they work satisfactorily to achieve the desired results. Theories are verified in experience by testing and applying them to actual situations. When they are found workable, they are true. A theory predicts that certain features will occur in a future experience. The process by which the prediction is verified establish whether the theory works and hence whether the theory is true. Pragmatism refuses to accept the view that truth is a static, fixed property which belongs to some theories and ideas and not to other. According to William James, within quotes, 
the truth of an idea is not a stagnant property. Truth happens to an idea. It becomes true, made true by events. Its verity is in fact an event, a process, the process namely its verification. Now coming to the historical background of pragmatism. The history of pragmatism can be traced back to the earliest beginning of philosophical activity in the Western Europe. Pragmatism arose as a reaction to the types of philosophy which reflected a Hegelian metaphysical bias. The new scientific ideas played an important role in setting the stage for the emergence of pragmatism. The evolutionary theory of Charles Darwin with its implication for religion and society caused intense intellectual activity. Some religiously minded American thinkers tried to find a way of reconciling the Darwinian conception of a world evolving through the struggle for the survival of the fittest with the theological view of the universe. The early pragmatists found in the Darwin's method and in the theory of evolution the basis for a new approach to the understanding of the universe in which we live. Charles Sanders Peirce In the intellectual fervent that developed after the Civil War, a group of Harvard students and teachers met to form what they call the Metaphysical Club. The members of the club discussed various problems and attempted to work out new solutions to them. Three of the leading figures in this group are usually credited with being the co-founders of pragmatism, namely Chaucer Wright, Charles Sanders Peirce and William James. Chaucer Wright was a lecturer in psychology and physics who was in correspondence with Darwin. He was one of the first Americans to argue that through the use of scientific and practical methods, metaphysical questions could finally be resolved. Peirce, who invented the name pragmatism, was a highly original thinker. The term was taken from the Greek word pragma, which means a thing alone or a discussion. Peirce was amazingly well versed in medieval thought especially in the theories of the great scholastic metaphysician Duns Scotus and in the original works of some of the founders of modern science such as Kepler and Galileo. He wrote voluminously on scientific, mathematical, logical and philosophical subjects. His contribution to pragmatism is notable. For Peirce, pragmatic method was primarily one for rendering our ideas clear so that philosophy could be transformed into a positive science. He was dismayed when James used the method to construct a new philosophy, much at variance with his own metaphysical views. So Pierce called himself a pragmaticist to differentiate his position from that of other pragmatic philosophers. In his article, namely, How to Make Our Ideas Clear, he attempts to explain the meaning of concepts and theories in terms of their practical effects and consequences. Instead of treating theories and concepts as abstractions, the pragmatic view regards them as proposals for doing something within the realm of actual experience. Ideas are to be considered meaningful only if it is possible to conceive of consequences that would affect our experience if the ideas were either true or false. Pragmatic method is a way of examining ideas and theories with respect to their function in an application to experience. Pierce was deeply suspicious of traditional metaphysics. He believed that his pragmatism would show that almost every proposition of ontological metaphysics is either meaningless or gibberish. One word being defined by other words and they by still others without any real conception ever being reached. His aim was to confine philosophy to a series of problems capable of investigation by the observational methods of the true sciences. Pierce fondly referred to his own philosophy as a laboratory method 
as it could obtain concrete, experimentally confirmed results. According to Pierce, the aim of all inquiry is the prediction of a belief. Belief is not just a mental state, it is a disposition to act in a certain way. This key consideration accounts for the label pragmatism, pragma meaning practice, action, things alone. Pierce considers what effects which might conceivably have practical bearings we conceive the object of our conception to have. Then our conception of these effects is the whole of our conception of the object. For instance, when we believe that a substance is hard, we expect that this belief will have certain consequences. Example, that the surface of the substance cannot be easily scratched. Our belief is true when the consequences we expect from the object or our conception actually do take place. When the conception disappoints our expectations, the belief is false. For example, the concept canals on Mars is meaningful only in terms of possible practical ways it can enter into and affect our experience. According to pragmatic theory, what matters is what we could do if we believed that canals existed on Mars as contrasted with what we would do if we believed that they did not exist or how each belief would affect our expectations of our future experiences. If there were no difference at all between the possible consequences of believing and not believing that the canals exist, then there is something peculiar about the concept canals on the mass. It is meaningless in practice or it has no cash value. However, in this case, the concept is meaningful since we can state a series of consequences indicating what we would expect to see if we took a rocket ship to Mars, what we would expect to see if a rocket photographed Mars and what we would expect to happen if an attempt were made to land on Mars. Each of these expectations would be different if we believed that there were canals or if we believed that there were none. To be precise, pragmatism refers to any theoretical perspective that emphasizes the practical that subordinates theoretical to useful concerns. Pierce holds that, within quotes, we must not begin by talking of pure ideas, vagabond thoughts that tramp the public roads without any human habitation, but must begin with men and their conversation. The pragmatist view of truth are naturalist views. We should not add anything metaphysical to first order inquiry. The concept of truth has to be extracted from our practices of inquiry, reason, giving and deliberation. Pierce conceives pragmatism as a method of reflection having for its purpose to render ideas clear. It belongs to methodology to what is called methodoetic. It is method or rule for making ideas clear, for determining the meaning of ideas. But the ideas are of different types. First, there is the idea of a perspect or sense datum, considered in itself without relation to anything else. Pierce calls this as the idea of firstness. Secondly, there is the idea of acting which involves two objects, namely the agent and the patient or that which is acted upon. This is the idea of secondness. Thirdly, there is the idea of a signed relation of a sign signifying to an interpreter that a certain property belongs to a certain object or rather to a certain kind of object. This is the idea of thirdness. Such ideas, which can be thought of as universal ideas, are called by peers intellectual concepts. In practice, pragmatis is a method or rule for determining their meaning. Peers formulates the principle of pragmatism as follows, within quotes, in order to ascertain the meaning of an intellectual conception, 
one should consider what practical consequences might conceivably result by necessity from the truth that conception and the sum of these consequences will constitute the entire meaning of the conception. For example, suppose someone tells me that a certain kind of object is hard and suppose that I do not know what the word hard means, it can be explained to me that to say that an object is hard means among other things that if one exerts moderate pressure on it, it does not give in the way that butter does, that if someone sits on it, he does not sink through and so on. The sum total of practical consequences which necessarily follows, if it is true to say that an object is hard, gives the entire meaning of the concept. If I do not believe this, I have to exclude all such practical consequences from the meaning of the term then it becomes impossible to distinguish between the meaning of hard and soft. Peirce's view is that the meaning of an intellectual concept can be explicated in terms of the ideas of necessary relationship between ideas of volition or action and the ideas of perception. William James William James is creditor for the development of contemporary pragmatism. He took his lead from the earlier formulations of C.S. Pierce and molded it in his own terms. In a treatise entitled Pragmatism, James explains his theory and brings out two sides to it. On the one hand, pragmatism is a method which is identified with the empirist attitude. He insists that as a method, it does not prescribe any particular results but merely a way of dealing with the world. What this method amounts to is roughly that distinctions carrying no practical differences are meaningless. Along with this goes a refusal to regard any issue as ever finally closed. The pragmatic method leads him to the view that scientific theories are instruments for future action rather than acceptable answers to questions about nature. His prominent work include The Principle of Psychology published in 1890 and Pragmatism published in 1907 along with The Will to Believe published in 1897 and Essays in Radical Empiricism published in 1912. Apart from pragmatism, James is known for his doctrine of radical empirism which held that pure experience is the stud all things are made of. He suggested abandoning the notion of self-consciousness as an entity set over against the objects of the material world. There is nothing to go beyond what James calls pure experience. In his work titled Pragmatism, William James says within quotes, a pragmatist turns his back resolutely and once for all upon a lot of inveterate habits dear to professional philosophers. He turns away from abstraction and insufficiency, from verbal solutions, from bad a priori reasons, from fixed principles, closed systems and pretended absolutes and origins. He turned towards concreteness and adequacy, towards facts, towards action and power. That means the empire's temper regnant and the racialist temper sincerely given up. It means the open air and possibilities of nature as against dogma, artificiality and a pretense of finality in truth. James insists that the only real world is the world of real experience. In actual life, definite, concrete situations are there and these are to be met and solved. Answers which solve previous situations may not solve the present or future problems. Everything changes, grows and develops. Nothing is fixed, static and final. The world is not moving towards predetermined end. What happens next is not determined. 
but is contingent upon what has happened. Life is a succession of real struggles with real difficulties. William James suggests three connected views of his pragmatic method. Firstly, it may help to clarify obscure or ambiguous concepts. Secondly, it may enable us to differentiate or to identify hypotheses according to whether we can find any conceivable differences in their consequences. And thirdly, it may enable us to reject as spurious hypotheses which have no practical consequences for us. James never claims that pragmatic method offers any definite answers to philosophical problems. Instead, it is a technique for locating those answers whatever they may turn out to be. It puts constraints on philosophical inquiry but does not anticipate its outcome. It is an injection with which substantive doctrines in philosophy and elsewhere should be measured. For James, pragmatism meant more than a critical maxim for achieving clarity of meaning. It provided a method for resolving moral, religious and metaphysical problems thereby freeing us from abstraction, insufficiency, from fixed principles, closed systems and pretended absolutes and origins and directing us to concreteness and adequacy towards facts, towards action and towards power. Pragmatism is a method of inquiry and a theory of meaning and truth derived from the natural sciences. It re-examined traditional philosophical problems by adopting empirical pragmatic method with specific appeal to the pragmatic principle of verification and meaning. It was one such method which set aside metaphysical leanings and focused on practical life. Pragmatists were opposed to the notion of truth as fixed and absolute. Truth is relative and varies in accordance with time, place and purpose. Pragmatism, popularly known as American Pragmatism, was popularized by C.S. Pierce, William James and John Dewey. They held that truth is ever-changing in the light of new data. Pragmatism represents the spirit of youth, adventure and experimentation. No philosophic ideas are true which cannot be put to some practical use. Pragmatism instills hope and promise. Before we move on to the next session, please try to answer the following questions. First one, examine how pragmatic method is utilized in philosophic inquiry of truth. Second, differentiate the pragmatic approaches adopted by William James and C.S. Pierce. Third, give an account of William James' pragmatism. Fourth, bring out the contributions of C.S. Pierce to the development of pragmatic method. Fifth, analyze the scope of pragmatism as a philosophic method. Books for your reference are Introduction of Modern Philosophy by C. E. M. Jodh, published by Oxford Clarence Press in 1953. A Critical History of Western Philosophy by Connor O. Macmillan Publishers, published in 1985. The Oxford Handbook of American Philosophy, published by Oxford University Press, written by Cheryl Messack. William James, published by Rotledge, edited by Ted Hondridge, published in 1986. The Philosophy of Peace, Selected Writings, Rotledge and Cahin Paul Limited Publishers, written by Justice Bushler, published in 1950. Hope this session was helpful to you. Hope to see you in yet another session. Thank you.